want to thank Turnkey for the opportunity to uh, present to you today. Uh, my name is Zubin Gidwani. Uh, my background is that of a customer. I used to be a financial systems uh, manager and assistant controller for a public traded company out in Hawaii. At our peak, we had about 600 departments under management. And I had the fun, dubious pleasure of being dubbed the budgeting guy who had to generate 600 Excel file templates send those out to my managers, and then wait for the chaos to ensue as they started to come back and flood my email box. So I was highly motivated to try to go out there and find a budgeting solution that would fit our needs, and was surprised that I couldn't find anything in the marketplace. We needed something that was going to be intuitive and easy to use. <clears throat> we had non-technical, non-financial users. I had farmers, and worse yet, I had retail people. And worse yet, I had uh, uh, nonprofits, uh, advertising folks, people who were well equipped at managing their businesses, their operations, but didn't like numbers, didn't like computers. We had to extract the data out of them and get it back up and feed it up to corporate so we could submit the budgets. Uh, we needed something that was also going to be uh, affordable. And one of the key challenges I ran into in the marketplace is that a lot of the budgeting solutions out there required you to pay per user. And I simply couldn't afford to roll it out to all of my managers. So we thought about playing games. Maybe we'll just get a two-user license. We'll use that functionality to export to Excel. And we'll kind of fling things back and forth. Um, <clears throat> the third problem that we had was that most of these things were so ridiculously cumbersome get quotes back from um, the um, budgeting solutions out there, they were quoting 40 hours minimum setup time. Um, it usually adds about another $20,000 uh, to the project. And it uh, just required a lot of time and effort and pain trying to set up the budgets, manage the templates, and things like that. So we went about and said, you know what, let's change all the rules and, and come up with a better, uh, better mousetrap. So we went out there when Microsoft announced the uh, end of life for Forecaster. They actually announced it back in 2009. We paid attention and we started building a replacement product. Uh, what you have here today that I'll show you is a culmination of about five years in the marketplace. Um, a lot of what we have built is in response to our customers, to our own feedback and to that of our customers, but basically we built a product for ourselves. We knew what was missing, we had been in the trenches, and we tried to fix the gaps. So um, <clears throat> what we have in a nutshell is a program that installs in one to two hours. Um, in that period of time, we are live linked to GP. If any of you have been working with Forecaster or other budgeting solutions, most of those solutions act as a data warehouse. and mean that basically you have to import your financial data into their systems. Uh, with dynamic budgets, you don't have to ever import any data into the system. We're live linked and we can read what is in GP at any point in time. Uh, we have basic reporting capabilities in the product. We're not trying to replace management reporter. We don't want to generate your board level financials, but at the same time, we can generate uh, more what we call informal financials and take the pressure off the formal reporting system. So instead of your managers continually bugging you, hey, can you rerun that report from last month? Can you do X? Can you do Y? A lot of our customers are now taking pride in telling them, hey, Zubin, you know what my users asked me? They asked me to regenerate remains financials. You know what I told them? No. You've got self-service access. Leave me alone. Um, what we're trying to do is provide self-service tools to empower your end users to leave you alone. And uh, it's really kind of a, a nice feeling once you get to that point. Um, we can run a report. I ran this on the 2014 actuals coming out of GP. I could have sorted this by uh, applied some formatting and looked at this from a company roll-up perspective. I could have rolled this up by various different account categories. All my accounts starting with an 11, all my accounts starting with a 12, or I could have done something a little bit different. I could have done a department perspective report, and I could have looked at my individual departments. My departments are 0, 1 through 600. If I wanted to look at this from a department roll-up perspective, maybe Ops, g and and Marketing, Ops, g and and Sales, 
and then drill down to my individual departments, then drill down to the account categories and such. Notice that I ran the report one time, but I was able to provide it in three, four, or five different flavors. Uh, we can change these ro uh, reporting formats on the fly without having to go through the pain of having to regenerate the data. So it's very, very efficient in what we do. When you go back to looking at the raw data, if we want to drill down into one of these accounts and look at the transactions that sit behind this, <clears throat> we can simply find an account of interest, take a look at my supplies uh, expenses, my hardware supplies, right-click on the month of February, and I can choose to look at the month or year-to-date transactions from here. I can drill down and get the GL transaction details coming straight back out of GP. This has enough information for us to take some interesting snapshots. We've got the vendor ID, the vendor name. If there is a problem with this transaction need to be recoded elsewhere, we happen to have the journal entry number and the accountant who had post on the batch. So we could reroute that to that particular accountant, ask them to correct this batch, this journal entry, and code this to X instead of Y. So that's just a little bit about the, the live reporting functionality in the system. What I want to show you today is more about the budgeting aspects of it. We have multiple entry points into the product. I don't know if we have anyone working with analytical accounting. If you do, maybe you could go ahead and um, input a, a question in the chat zone and um, Brad can interrupt me and, and let me know if we have any questions. Um, but uh, if we have anyone who are out there working with analytical accounting, we've got the ability to work with analytical accounting dimensions. Uh, we've got the ability to budget to those. We've got the ability to budget to vendor IDs, to customer IDs, sales reps, sales territory. So we can be quite crafty at, at what we're doing. We're now starting to generate the ability to run budget versus actual reports, not just at the financial level, but down to the sum of the, those um, dimensional levels that you imagine that you'd be able to generate a budget versus actual report at the vendor ID. So within your materials and supplies, how much do we budget to vendors X, Y, and Z, and are we on track or off track of what we expected? So I'm going to go into our basic budget entry form. <clears throat> if anyone's been working with Forecaster, this is going to be the most familiar screen for you. If I go in here, I've got various different things I can search by. The org unit is our uh, term for basically a department. Everyone's got business units, cost centers, departments, projects, programs, grants, fund. We can think of the organizational entity as the organizational unit and call it an org unit. I'm going to choose my department 100, my admin department. Had I wanted to look at a grouping of those departments, I could have looked at just the G&A departments, the org units, and I would have seen just a shorter list of G&A related assets. If I looked at my sales, I would have only had just one department under sales. So you can group and work with these to kind of narrow down your choices. Uh, I also could have looked at my object codes and gone down to individual main accounts or natural accounts like travel or materials and supplies, etc. And these are all configurable based upon uh, how you've defined your GL segments in GP. So I'm going to look at department 100. I'm going to act like a uh, department head. I'm going to look at my admin department. And I'm going to bring back all the accounts for my department on screen so I can start budgeting. And then here, I notice that I've already imported some data in here. And I've got more complex information. I can't just simply start budgeting, I need to do something a little bit different. If I bring back an alternate budget, I may have also set this up. Uh, let me create a brand new budget for us to play with today. If I wanted to create a budget, I can come up with this. Test for turn key. I'll hit create new budget. And over here, I'm going to create my templates for the budget. And as quickly as that, I will go ahead and add my new templates to the system. And I'll go back to my basic budget dashboard. And now I have a, another budget that I can choose to search by, test for turnkey. 
and I've got all of my accounts available for budgeting. Um, if we already have data in some of those accounts, they'll start to turn gray and turn to read only. If I wanted to play with a brand new blank slate budget, I can have something like this. If I wanted to come in here and state that I was going to spend $10,000 in rental supplies and do this by a simple spread method, I could come in here and choose a spread method of monthly, for example. Uh, if I wanted to come in here and hand key some expenses in here, I could have typed in $500, it would have removed the spread method, and I could have manually used copy and paste on my keyboard to populate my template. If I wanted to export this whole format, take it home, work on the budget in Excel, bring it back the next day, I could do a mass copy and paste by Excel. We have an export to Excel button here, and you can simply copy and paste values from here out to Excel and come back in. Now, if we wanted to itemize out one of these accounts, maybe I didn't want to go ahead and just do a simple data entry, uh, I could have come in here and clicked on an account number and provided line item details. Now, this is actually telling me that I have unsaved changes on screen. So the program is always trying to monitor and watch the backs of the employees. So I'm going to go ahead and discard this information because I'm just playing around here and test. <clears throat> in here, I can drill down into my training account. And I'm going to come in here to my line item details. And I could have done something like rate times unit equals cost. We have simple math operators for simple players. No offense against any of your users, but if they're anything like mine, mine were incredibly uh, technologically challenged. And we tried to build something that was nearly bulletproof for the end users, but gave them some advanced functionality. So if we wanted to say that we're going to spend $200 in training costs per person, and I've got five headcount in my department, I could have done this by control C and control V on my keyboard or copy and paste with my right click of the mouse. And I could have this formula built out for me. Now if I wanted to vary up my head count and in the summer months we're going to bring in some interns and take our head count up to nine staff per department or per month, I could do that and then send the kids back to school when school starts up in September. So I've got variable expenses specified within a rate times unit equals cost type of calculation. Now, maybe we've got uh, a scenario one and a scenario two. If the user runs out of rows in their templates, they do not have to come crying to the budget admin and ask them to fix my templates. We train them that they can right click on the mouse, add five extra rows below, and away they go. Now what I can do is over here, come in here and paste the same information we had up above, change my rate. Maybe it's going to be $400 in training expense per person. And this is my scenario one and my scenario two. And I really want to do this scenario two. So I'm going to exclude this. I'm going to go to my manager and tell him that I want to spend $30,000 this year on training. If he la laughs at me and says, no way, that's too rich for the budget, I can go ahead and exclude the $30,000 scenario and revert back to the include the $15,000 scenario. If I was able to negotiate, hey, look, if I can save money in other areas of our department, I really need to push the, the training this year. If I can scrimp on uniforms or supplies or whatnot, can we come back and revisit this conversation later? You can leave that scenario enabled in your budget. It's sitting there idle. And then if you're able to negotiate it and flip it around, you've got this alternate scenario here. You can just reactivate that. So rather than having to have two versions of the budget and not necessarily being held to have the visibility because you're limited to, to line items, you can have multiple scenarios here sitting idle, sitting as comments, and then come back to those and flip them back to active if need be. Hoping that makes sense to everybody. As we're looking at this and we're kind of scratching our heads to trying to figure out how much I spend on training next year, you can actually look down to the bottom half of the screen and see how much you've spent in prior years. You can have as many years represented in this lower account history as you'd like to have. 
you can control the sort order and the number of budgets that you reference, either budgets, forecasts, or historical actuals. Now, if I had a question as to why I spent $1,500 last February, this is what one of the features that the end users love the most, is that they can click one click, and they've got the transaction details right in front of them. They don't have to pull out Management Reporter. They don't have to go to the share folder or the SharePoint site and search for the month, search for the year, open the reports, drill, drill, drill to get the transaction details. One click and they've got the transaction details right in front of them. Typical response we get is that, wow, that's, I've been begging accounting for that information for years and all of a sudden it's just one click away. Thank you. So this information is right available to them. Um, if we wanted to do something a little bit more fancy, maybe you have a global inflation factor and we're going to take last year's numbers and gross them up by a certain percentage. I clicked on this magnifying glass on this row one and I brought up in this pop-up window and I can actually go and fetch data from another budget or maybe another account within the same budget. If you were in the cost of sales account and you were trying to build a transact or build a formula that was a lookup of the sales revenue number or revenue numbers, subtotal those and then multiply it by a COGS rate to get to your cost of sales, you could do that with this type of functionality. You could also take last year's number within this department 100. I could have taken a prior year's number. I'm just going to grab my benefits expense because it has full 12 months of data. I could bring that back onto the grid, or I could go shopping for more data to fill up my data shopping cart with. I'll go up to my global variables, which is our word for stats, statistics. And then here I might have had some inflation factors. Corporate told us that we're supposed to use this inflation factor. That's a little bit radical because we've been playing around with demo data. But imagine it was maybe 1.03 instead of these higher 5x numbers. I could bring these two lines back on screen, adjust my formula, and let's just imagine that this was 1.03. So um, had this been a corporate inflation factor that everyone was supposed to be using, ultimately they would have done the lookup and they would have had a consistent statistic. Now, I'm not sure if anyone's ever had that issue of five different versions of the truth where um, everyone thought the mileage reimbursement rate was something else, 55 cents, 50 cents, 75 cents, and you're trying to figure out why in the world do they have different interpretations of that one stat that we're supposed to be using, the federal um, mileage allowance reimbursement rate. Well, this controls that and brings it back into alignment. So. Okay, uh, you could simply come in here and delete some additional rows that you don't need. You might have a calculation and they say, you know what, on top of that last year times 3% inflation, I know I've got an additional expense of 25000 in March for this reason. Um, OSHA safety training. We got uh, ahead of violation. We need to do a specific uh, compliance training. So we're going to bring in a trainer in that month for 25000 to do X. And maybe we've got another situation or we've got another type of training that's going to be held out in August for another $7,800. So they can simply come in here and add mixed itemizations with formulas and come up with the total budget. What's important to corporate, we're not really as concerned about how they arrived at their numbers. We want to have the visibility to see how they, uh, what was in their heads. But end of the day, we want to know that they're spending $32,800. These are the monthly values. This is what's going to roll up into our financial reports. So I'll go ahead and hit the Save button here. Brad, do we have any questions in the queue? Not sure if we've got any questions in the queue, so we'll just Apologies, keep going. I, I was muted in two places, but no, not as, not as of yet. Okay. Again, feel free to interrupt uh, the presentation if you want to go ahead and submit a question. Um, <clears throat> feel free to do so. Um, uh, and we'll try to reserve some time at the end for questions as well. So I had started from our basic budget entry form and I wanted to itemize this one particular account. When I come back to do the rest of my 
simple top-level entries, I can simply resume to going back to $500 a month and copying that value across multiple accounts if my budgeting was that simplistic. Or come in and this is $600 a month in that one, etc. But anytime I want to go back, I can drill back into any particular account by clicking on the account number and drilling back down and providing that line item detail because it sits behind the scenes. So I'm going to show you a slightly different style of data entry. We have a custom budget entry screen here. For those that have alternate formats that may say, you know what, we don't do 12-month budgeting, we just do annual target, one value for the whole year for the budget. We can accommodate things like that. If you want to do an annual budget, I could have brought up this type of form. Maybe I want to see a comparison of a couple of years of actuals maybe show a month, uh, show the most recent year forecast, and then type in a uh, target value. Uh, so it could have done a, a simple kind of variance calculation in here as well, variance, variance percentage. Uh, if I want to do monthly and comparisons, I could have done a uh, budget 15 versus 16 and taken a look at something like this. We could have had budget actual variance for year one, budget actual variance for current year, input your budget here into this column for next year's budget. Uh, really sort of the sky is the limit. What sits behind this is a design tool that's going to look familiar to those that have worked with Manager Reporter that have worked with the column design sets. So if we come in here, we have the ability to pick one of these types of formats. I can look at this from a WYSIWYG perspective and look at this from a column layout. This is my first column. This is the name of that column in the header. Choose whether it's a data entry, read-only, or a, a pre-built calculation field or a custom calculation field. If we want to do a pre-built calculation like variances, all you have to do is specify which column you're going to start with and what you're going to subtract from. So I'm going to start with column two, and I'm going to subtract column one. You have a preview of the, of the formula right there. Um, you can change the background colors by clicking here, choosing a color, or choose from the rainbow. You can choose a foreground text color. So if you choose navy blue, you probably want to change your black text to white so it's readable. So relatively straightforward. It should be very familiar for those that are working with Management Reporter already. Uh, similar to the um, basic budget entry screen, our custom budget entry screen, anytime you see a prior year budget, you can preview that budget and bring up the details that sit behind that. We also have the ability to come in here and look at the actuals and drill down on the transaction details for the whole year or whatever time period that that particular column covers. Okay. So um, another style of budgeting that we have just recently introduced is um, it's a little bit more akin to an Excel spreadsheet. And what we have the ability to do here is bring up a particular uh, very rich, very detailed type of spreadsheet that has lots of row-to-row -row cross-referencing. And this was built for a staffing company that wanted to input the number of total hours. Basically, they only have six inputs for their staff members. They come in here, input the total number of hours that are going to be worked by the employees for the month, how much they're going to sell in weekly hours of staffing. Uh, what's the average billable rate for the employees? What is the cost of the employees? our average hourly rate of the employees, and whether or not they're going to have any conversion fees, how much, what percentage is clerical versus other, and or are they going to have any conversion fees for direct hire versus um, uh, just uh, temporary placements. So maybe we've got a one conversion here in the month of May for $5,000 uh, turnover fee. What the end user can then do is that they can hit the Calculate Now button, and all these numbers down below are going to refresh. So basically, the end user inputs six line items, but they can generate a 30, 40, pay, or 30, 40 row long uh, P&L statement coming off of that data. So if I hit the Calculate Now button, we'll see these numbers are going to update. Now all of a sudden, I have new numbers in here. 
Some of these are all visual. They might just be calculated margins, margin percentages, etc. End of the day, certain rows are actually going to book back to the GL. And we can specify that certain one of these accounts are going to write back to particular object codes on each one of our line items. So if there's a need to have a little bit more complex type of Excel spreadsheet-like experience, uh, this is probably something we want to take offline and talk to you about, but we do have the ability to do very rich uh, cross-referencing. The way that that is set up is similar to almost like a row format in what you'd expect from Mantra Reporter. And if we come in here and take a look at our templates, it's done in a simplistic manner that we're just doing row-to-row -row referencing. I'm going to take my sales number is going to be my row 3 times row 4 times row 73. So kind of simple referencing in here. We've got some basic formatting capabilities. We can bold certain line items. We can underline them. We can indent them. We can change the background color for the entire row, or we can change the background color just for one cell. So fair amount of flexibility. This is a custom data input form uh, that we are going to be looking to in the future to turn this into more of a flexible reporting solution uh, to try to um, give a little bit more of an experience like Mantra Reporter, but it's going to be, again, limited in its formatting. Uh, again, don't think of this necessarily as your board-level reporting tool for generating the formal financials at month end, but we want to be able to provide convenience reporting and take the pressure such that your end users have self-service reporting capabilities right inside of our application. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and flip around a little bit. Uh, one of the benefits of the application is that we're not just using this as a budgeting solution. We want to be able to structure this as a reporting as a um, reporting tool in the in the sense that we want to be able to close the loop. As you're going through and budgeting each year, we want you to be able to record your budget versus actual variances and be able to take action upon those uh, notes. So if I take a look at my explanations here, if I take a look at my variances, I can generate a report that's month budget versus actual, quarter to date budget to actual, year to date, and even prior year comparisons, year over year. Now, if I wanted to take a look at my information here, I can see that I've got a variance of 2250. I had nothing budgeted, but I had expense of 2250. If I can click on that, I can take a look at the details that sit behind those numbers. Unique to our product is that we're showing you the transaction details coming out of the GP in the top half of the screen and the full year budget in the lower half of the screen. Ideally, you should have been able to tell us what is the budget of the item, yes, no, was it due to a timing difference earlier or later than anticipated, or was it simply a, a budget oversight? Once you understand why the variance occurred for this month, you can click on the com comment here, and you can go ahead and give us an explanation. Over for month due to oversight, uh, timing difference will uh, hit the books in July instead of Feb. Next year, uh, budget it for June, because that's what the new commitment in the contract states. So if you give us an explanation why we're the over under for the month, is it going to impact us later this year, and should we course correct next year? We now have that as a meaningful explanation sitting in the system. Next time we go to budget this account, we take a look at the 6180 account next year. If we're scratching our heads trying to figure out how we should budget for this account next year, you can look to the bottom half of the screen, not only tell us how much you spent in prior years, but if we go to the variances tab, we actually have a running list of comments. So we can teach ourselves how to do this better next year by looking at our comments. We can preview the comment, or we can click on the comment and bring it open in a pop-up screen and make it bigger. Now, one of our customers was just going through setting this up and said, you know what, what if we want to have a dialogue back and forth and have, as the financial team, 
the end manager puts in their comments explaining it to us and says that I'm over because I was over and has an inadequate expense because I spent more than I thought I would. Well, it's really not an adequate explanation. You can go ahead and drop in the comments in here, insufficient explanation, tell us why you were over for the month. And then they can go back and forth and accumulate more comments in here. So um, just kind of the way that the system is set up. All right. Um, one other thing that we can do, I'm not sure if any, how many of you are doing forecasting, mid-year forecasting, but we have the ability to generate a template, and then we can apply those templates to very quickly build out of a full-year forecast for the entire company or uh, swags of the company. If I wanted to take a look at year-to-date and the original budget, I could do a template which mixes partial year actuals and then remaining month's budget. I could also have done, say, maybe partial year actuals this year and last year. Let's roll back to 2013 actuals for the remainder of the year. Or maybe I wanted to have 2014 actuals, but I wanted to do a July year to date and then do a year to date average from that point forward. So I could have used July for the remaining months and choose instead of a monthly value, I'll use the year-to-date average value. And then we could have had July basically taken the eight month, the seven month average and applied that for the remaining months. So we can use these templates, define these templates, and then we can go through and apply those templates to various different accounts. So if I wanted to go over to my my new test for turnkey. And I could have gone back into my training account. And over here, what we could have done was instead of starting with all this information, maybe the finance team pre-populated something in here and told us that this is what we think your world is going to look like. We're assuming that you're going to be a blend of the original, of the actuals year to date and the original budget. And maybe the user does this on their own, or maybe the finance team pre-populates this ahead of time. I'm, again, I'm just going to grab this one first account because it happens to have 12 months of value. It's not necessarily the same account, but it should have been. Um, but this is ideally has 12 months of values to display to the user. I could have marked it as locked to gray that row out. I could have marked it as excluded so it has no bearing on the financial numbers for this, for this account. The end users could have then done whatever they wanted to do with their budgeting exercises down here, but this is the guidance. You should not exceed $13,000 or whatever corporate might have for a mandate for budget guidance. They could have said, this is what you spent last year, this is what we're projecting that you should spend, Maybe you've got three scenarios. Scenario one is if you were to budget according to the original plan, you've got no remaining expenses in the, in the final month. If you were to budget according to the, the blend of last year, this year, you would have roughly $500 a month expense in scenario two. If you were to take the average run rate and apply that for the remaining months of the year, we'd have a scenario three sitting down in here. All three of those could be marked as excluded, scenarios one, two, and three, and say, okay, do any of these smell like what you're doing? Maybe you can populate row four with actuals year to date and allow them to key in the numbers for the remaining months of the year. <clears throat> so a lot of our customers have very uh, divergent uh, styles of doing mid-year forecasting, um, how much information they want to show, uh, we can work with you to uh, kind of push those through. I'm going to turn the corner here and talk a little bit about payroll and allocations. Uh, before I do that, I'll just touch upon user security. Uh, with a very flexible user security system, <coughs> I was logged in as a system manager. We have different roles. An application user is an end user who's going to be keying in data to the budget templates. A restricted admin, uh, we've had several situations where we've had finance team members 
who are supposed to manage the entire system, but they don't have access to payroll details. They're only the, the CFO and maybe the CEO are, are privy to payroll information. So this is a type of user that can basically run all administrative features except things that smell like payroll. They can't um, create accounts that have higher privileges than themselves. They can't demote an account to not be associated to payroll. They can't access the payroll module, et cetera. The system manager is basically uh, top of the heap. They can do anything they want in any company that they're assigned to or that they assign themselves to. Uh, unrestricted admin is top of the heap, but only works within the, uh, the company that they've been assigned to. So if you have multiple companies and separate budget managers for each company, you can make them um, uh, an administrator of their own fiefdom and not have them even be visible to see any of the other information across the corporation. You can give somebody access to just the payroll menu and that's it. So if you had an HR payroll person who's coming in and entering the payroll for you but you don't want them uh, breaking anything else in the system, they can be excluded from all the other administrative features of the system and just limited to payroll. Uh, for the end users, you can grant them access to individual departments. When they're granted access to those departments, they have the ability to read information in those departments. So maybe they have global read rights. Maybe they're only editing their own budget, the admin budget in department one. Maybe they don't have any approval rights whatsoever. Or maybe they have a subordinate who's preparing the budget for department 100. They have the ability to edit their subordinate's work and they have the final say to approve this budget before it's submitted to corporate. Now, if they have the summary level information and the appropriate level, you could have access to payroll information. So typically, we would start with non-sensitive accounts, or you could change the level up to level one. So typically, we would set payroll accounts to be level one, and they would uh, require you to have an additional security level to see payroll type of information. If the user has summary level, they can see that there's $500,000 of payroll in the department. If they have details, they have the ability to drill down and see the names and dollars associated with those uh, with that uh, salary amount. If they don't have the details, they'll be prompted that uh, they don't have in, uh, they have insufficient privileges and contact the admin. So what it looks like in payroll. We have the ability to go very detailed. I can start with my 17 budget. I could have had medical expenses, car allowance, uh, continuing education, FICA taxes, etc. FICA tax is 6.2%, maxed out at 118.5. 7347 max payout. Uh, I could have had medical expenses with multiple choices, HMO, PPO, employee, family, spouse, child types of offerings. Uh, you can, this is the screen where we set up all those rates. The employee roster comes in. The employee roster is specific to each budget year. So if you have <coughs> a different set of employees from year one to year two, if you make changes in year two, it does not go back and recompute year one's budget. They are separate and uh, unique. So where the rubber hits the road is we've got two styles of budgeting. You can either budget from a salary type of orientation where we're working with the salaried employees that would be assigned to a master home department. Let me grab my data here. Employees would be working in a master home department. You could scroll off to the right. You give the person an increase in pay or a decrease in pay if need be. You can do up to two different rate changes within a year. And then further off to the right, we have the tax and fringe elections per each of the employees. You can click on the magnifying glass here, and you get a preview of the information that's going to be uh, posting as a transaction. This is a very detailed screen that's good for the payroll specialist to review their work and validate their work. If we wanted to make sure that FICA was being properly calculated and cut off, make sure I've got FICA calculation there. Uh, we have the annual salary of 190000 certainly going to be above the threshold. We can click like, in the magnifying glass and watch that the FICA, in fact, verify that the FICA does, in fact, 
cut off midway through the year. So once we meet our threshold, the cap tax and the FICA will cap out. Okay. Um, our other style, this is a style where if you wanted to, <coughs> if you wanted to allocate an employee across multiple departments, you can do so. So if any of you are in that situation where you need to share the employee across multiple departments or specify multiple different salary type of codes, you're tracking uh, vacation or PTO, or if you want to share this person between three different departments, or if you want to do a late start. So we leave it at zero and up until the point of hiring. We maybe train the person wholly in a single department for the first two months until they're competent with the organization. And then maybe we split them four ways during the rest of their tenure with the company. If it's a late or early termination, we could go ahead and zero them out once they quit the company or leave the company and do something in that fashion. So late starts, early terminations, splits. And if you weren't using a named employee, you could use this as a, um, as a role or a position. And this could have been a headcount. So I could have had 15 security guards working per month in this assignment for that particular department and 20 security guards in this next assignment. As long as they have the same average rate of pay and the same type of elected benefits, you could use this to do a position instead of an employee. Uh, for those that are more detail-oriented, if you needed to go out and specify the number of working hours by employee by pay period, we have some union um, shops that were uh, for customers that uh, had to be much more detailed in, the pay in their staffing models. Uh, this screen allows for that. You can go ahead and pick an employee, specify their hourly rate, either $15 an hour, or it could have been $40,000 annual salary. It will back compute the figure for either one of those styles of inputs. When we go off to the right here, you've got every pay period straight time number of hours that they're working, and you can input the number of overtime hours they're working per each pay period. Now, the first time we showed this to a payroll person, she said, I quit. I'm not going to keep changing their hours because they change their hours multiple times during the day throughout the whole budgeting process. It's going to drive me nuts. So we moved that functionality over to the budget manager screen. The end users can only see the, the menus on the left. And we gave the end users the ability to manage the hours, but not see any of the payroll confidential um, uh, compensation information or benefits. So they have the employee IDs, the job title, total hours worked, and then the straight time and overtime hours to manipulate themselves. Okay. We have lots and lots of, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt, Zubin. We do have two questions. Um, would you like to answer those now, or did you want to wait till the end for the Q&A? Why don't we go ahead and take them now? Sure. First one is from Karen. Can dynamic budgets import payroll data from the Workday system? So a system called Workday. For yeah. Um, typically, we have about probably 85% of our customers are working with a third-party payroll system. Um, uh, Workday, Ceridian, ADP, Paychex, uh, Paylocity, things like that. Typically, most of those systems will allow you to export out to a CSV format or an Excel-friendly format, and then you can Im copy and paste that back in. So it's not necessarily a direct import utility, but it's a, it's a direct copy and paste functionality. Sometimes the codes you get out of those systems may be cryptic, uh, PPO family may come out as H32F, um, so sometimes you may want to translate the labels that come off the payroll system report to something friendlier, and then use that as the labels that we use in our system. But uh, essentially we just need to, typically we would manually set up the expense definition screen, keying in these rates. This is maybe about 45 minutes to an hour, just depending upon if you have all the information at your fingertips. Um, and then the employee roster is done by copy and paste, and the payroll assignments is also, or the hourly staffing is done by copy and paste. Hopefully that answers Karen's question. Okay. Thank you. And Ronice is asking, can you insert comments per GL account while budgeting? 
Uh, yes. So basically, those comments, if we go back to the basic budget entry screen, <clears throat> if you wanted the simplistic format, let's go back to my turnkey budget ID here. If you wanted the simplistic fashion here, where you've got the 12 months on screen and you want to go down here, I had the spread amount and the spread method. I could click the show assumption, and now I've got the ability to write in some simple notes. So this is one note field for the whole column. And then if we were in the individual line items, if you noticed it when we are going in on that um, that training expense previously, I was typing in explanations at each line item level. So this could be expense one, one safety training um, supplies, etc. So I'm just kind of putting some random words in here, but yes, you have the ability to itemize each line item within the GL code or do a more simplistic fashion of a simple explanation for the entire uh, code. Does that answer your question? One other thing um, that I mentioned on the, the variance analyses is that, uh, again, if you're looking back at a reporting perspective, we have the ability to come back in here and generate variance analyses. And you can also comment on the performance of the account after the fact. OK. OK, and then we got another question. Sorry. Um, can you run P&L reports from dynamic budgets? Uh, yes, you can. So it's a matter of just kind of setting them up, uh, whether it's a custom report, um, multi-column comparison reports, or just a full 12-month flat report specific to a particular budget. Our generic report is what we call the monthly summary accounts. And if I had done my 2014 actuals or my budget, I could have done one department or multiple departments, but I'll just want to run one department. And I could have had this set up in whatever flavor I wanted. So if I wanted to have my account categories, um, expenses, my um, um, labor, materials, supplies, contractors, whatever kind of um, reporting categories you wanted. What sits behind the, our reporting capabilities, <coughs> we have the two building blocks, the org units and the objects. And they have core attributes, whether it's budget or not. But then we have 10 reporting tags, custom user definable reporting tags. So if you wanted to group your departments by division or by role of tag one or role of tag two, you can input lots of different reporting tags. And we have a very simplistic manner of using these reporting tags in the row formats. If you were to create a row format, such as this de uh, department roll-up, I have company attributes to choose from. I have departmental attributes to choose from, these organizational attributes. I have the main account attributes, what we call the object tags. And if you have situations where typically code 5100 means uh, salary, but in one instance it means travel, because um, not everyone's clean, uh, we actually have the ability to go down to the account level tags, give you 10 accounting uh, GL code level tags, and then you can compensate for discrepancies in your GLs. Uh, that's also useful if you've got multiple companies and the companies are in disparate GLs. Uh, that you've got completely different reporting structures, uh, GL structures in each of your companies. You can actually use that functionality at the reporting tag level to build consolidated reports across uh, diverse uh, GL formats. Okay, then we've got a couple more questions still. Can you allocate expenses by multiple drivers, in parentheses, revenue, headcount, etc.? This is from Jim Roberts. Uh, yes, so uh, what we could do is we could do an allocation by amounts variable. We can basically take an entire department and zero it out and then share it across the organization, either by a financial metric or by a, a statistical metric. I could take a handful of accounts if I didn't want to zero out the entire department. I could take maybe five accounts out of the HR department that are kind of operational expenses and share them out. Or I could take a free-form amount, such as a uh, like a rent expense. 
I could have come in here and specified rent cam security. It did not budget it in one account and have to move it. I could just freeform the amounts that I want to allocate out. I could, for example, have a two-way split between departments 100 and 200. This could have been a financial lookup. I said, okay, I'm going to share this based upon their relative shares of total revenue, or maybe it's based upon their relative share of total uh, labor expense, all of my 5-1 series accounts. Or I could have shared it based upon a metric, click on my variables, and I could have gone to my stats module and shared it based on headcount or square footage or whatnot. So yes, uh, very robust allocations. Uh, sometimes it's painful to set these up year one. If you've got very large uh, allocations, we've got one customer that does a lookup of four, 40 core accounts in one particular admin department, shares it out to 400 departments, and each department is defined as a lookup of seven labor codes to figure out what percentage of this total expense from the admin area they're going to receive based upon their share of labor. It was painful to set up year one, but the beauty is year two, we hit the duplicate button. We assign a new name for year two, specify that we're going to make this not on the old budget, but we're going to rep assign this to the FY17 budget. And all of a sudden, we have rent 2017 simply just by clicking this one button, and now everything's adjusting for us behind the scenes. So then you've got this set up for year two, and you're just waiting for year two's numbers to update, and then you just hit the refresh button and hit the save button. So uh, traditionally, allocations are very painful in budgeting because you've got moving targets, you're moving source amounts, you're moving basis accounts, um, and having to recalculate and update that all in your spreadsheets can be quite cumbersome. Over here, it's which we hit the refresh button and hit save again. Okay, and then Ellie Angela is asking, what is the maximum character for text option in the column per line? There is no limit. So uh, we have it as a text field, which is unlimited. Um, uh, we started off with like 255 characters, and it was just, we, just we, we pulled that, so you are unlimited in that. You've got the ability, typically when you're at this line item level, uh, we would recommend that they try to limit these explanations to about one to two lines. If you have to do a lot of scrolling or kind of resizing of a row, it's a little bit of a hassle. Um, so usually one to two lines of text at the line item level here. If they have a couple of paragraphs, we encourage them to click the comments button and they can type in a couple of or copy and paste a couple of paragraphs worth of information. And the reason we encourage that comments window is that this is resizable. We can make this larger and makes it easier for a reviewer to read those comments that are in there. Now, if they have more than a couple of, um, a couple of paragraphs of information, we would actually recommend that they use the attachments button. Then they could upload the original PDF or vendor contract or Excel spreadsheet if it was more complex than what we can handle. Um, you can uh, upload full documents. Uh, they'll store into the database and be instantly retrievable for everyone else that's reviewing the budget. So line item description, next evolution is the comments, next step up from there is the file attachments. But you've got quite a bit of uh, ability to store comments and annotations about your budgets. And those line item comments, comments and attachments are available throughout the program within all of our budgeting screens, also within the payroll module and various different other places. You know that the employee roster, if there's some reason you need to make a comment about an employee, you've got comments and file attachments here. You've got that at the employee um, data entry levels within our allocations, quite a few places in the application. And that is it for the questions for now. Okay. Well, uh, our pricing is up on our, our uh, website, and um, Turnkey can go over that with you. But basically, we define, uh, we tiered the product based upon the size of the company, that um, uh, number of budgeted departments that you're working with. So if you go up to Dynamic Budgets, we have a demo video in here that can, can give you a 12-minute recap of the type of information we've uh, shown you today. 
And if you take a look at the pricing information here, it's going to show you the tiers. We start off at small organizations up to 25 departments, $7,500 license fee, 18% uh, annual maintenance. No matter how big or small your, your organization may be, typically we can get you up and running with five hours of administrative training. Usually within that five hours, we're able to complete your payroll, uh, complete your user security assignments, uh, train you on the use of formulas and lookups and things like that. It's all pretty straightforward. Um, if you are a large complex organization with a lot of formula, a lot of rate times unit equals cost type of formulas, if you're in healthcare or retail or um, various different industries, um, manufacturing, and you had a lot of those types of formulas, driver-based formulas, we'd recommend maybe uh, up to 10 hours if maybe about 40% of your accounts are driver-based. If you had about 90% of your accounts were driver-based, probably about 20 hours of consulting. Uh, we simply can't invent much more than about 20 hours of consulting. It's a far more intuitive, easy-to-use application than our, than our competition. Uh, the one thing I was going to leave you with, um, in terms of higher-end reporting, we are working with Power BI, uh, Microsoft's Power BI. I don't know if you've worked with this yet. Uh, let me go back to the other accounts here. But we have examples of starter dashboard reports that if you want something flashier than what you've seen today, uh, you can work with our starting Power BI reports and do a lot of interesting things uh, with kind of the integration between the two products. Um, you can take our data set, oh great, just try, <laughs> just timed out on my trial. So let's see if this will cooperate. Uh, but you can do a lot of interesting, uh, <laughs> okay. All right, well, we'll put that off to another demo another day. It's always during uh, the demo. What I was going to show you was, well, nice flashy KPI dashboards using uh, the free dash, uh, Power BI tool from Microsoft. And uh, I'm sure Turn Key has probably exposed that to you. If not, uh, we can talk about that at a later time. Uh, what we've shown you today sparks your interest. Um, we're more than happy to give you an evaluation copy of the software. You can use it for 30 days on your network. Uh, to make that happen, we just need about half an hour of time with your IT department or with Turnkey to install the application on your network, and then you could actually do a demo for your staff with your numbers flowing through the application on your network. So if that's of interest, we're more than happy to make that uh, happen. It gives you a test uh, opportunity to kick the tires and try out the program. also gives you a chance to call our bluff and, and prove that it actually can be installed in one to two hours and be fully up and running. Thank you very much for your time today. Brad, any other comments or closing remarks? No, I think that about wraps it up. I appreciate everybody joining us today. And like Zubin said, if you have questions or if you just want to learn more, contact either um, Dynamic Budgets through their website or Turnkey Technologies through ours, and we will get you set up.